Hello. Welcome. Welcome to the beautiful Columbia City Theater. Thank you so much for coming out and supporting KEXP today. Give yourselves a huge hand. We want to thank you and the Columbia City Theater and Sub Pop and our good friend, Father John Misty, for this awesome and special event today. Thank you so much, Josh. Oh, yeah. Why don't you just, I'll just hand it over to you now. Okay. Come on the roll shack sheets where we make love, honey bear, honey bear, honey bear. Ooh. Fuck the world, damn straight, malaise. It may be just us who feel this way. And 
play piano in the chateau lobby I've never done this Baby, be gentle, it's my first time I've got you inside People are boring But you're something else completely damn Let's take our chances Lift up your wedding dress, someone was probably murdered in. So bourgeoisie to keep waiting. Dating for 20 years just feels pretty civilian. And I've never thought that, ever thought that once in my whole life. You are my first time. But you're something else I can't explain You take my last name First time you let me stay the night Despite your own rules You took off early to go cheat your way Through film school You left a note in your purse Stay as long as you want And I haven't left your bed
started early, huh? It's your heckle juice. No, I'm good. I'm literally looking down on you right now for your, for your daytime drinking. <laughs> uh, what's going on now? Well, we Q&A's? We could start that now, and before I ask a few questions, I want to let people know that, should, can I call you Josh, Father yeah. John, Mr. Misty, Josh? <laughs> Josh. All right, well, Josh it is, but you all know Father John Misty is here. I mean, oh wow, right? <laughs> but Josh is generous enough to uh, entertain questions from the audience, so if you think you'd like to ask a question, I'm going to get things started, the juice is flowing, but make your way up here because we'd love to hear your question on this microphone over here. But Josh, thank you so much. It's so great to have sure. you here. You're always so generous with your time. Should I put my, yeah, headset, put your axe my down. microphone headset on so I can... <laughs> uh, but I got to ask, first time in Seattle? <laughs> yeah. First time. Yeah. Every other time it's been a hologram. Yeah. Which has been fiscally great. I know you've been living all over for a while, um, but we think of this as a hometown for you. I know you're oh, yeah. not originally from here, but you spent many years here. What's it feel like? I know you just played the Capitol Hill Block Party, a huge show. Does, how does it feel to play in Seattle? Um, does it feel like home? I mean, a lot of yeah. people come out that you know. Yeah. I've talked to artists who say they feel a lot of pressure when they know that there's a lot of people that they know in the audience. They've got to put on a really good shoe. Yeah, yeah, I do. Well, I, I place, I'm placing pressure on myself right now. God knows why I don't know any of these people. This lady's drunk. <laughs> Could do almost anything and get an applause, so. Um, and yet I still am in a, neur in a uh, neurotic tailspin. Um, but yeah, no, I, I live, you know, it, it is, you know, it's great. I mean, in all, in all honesty, I mean, 
it, uh, you know, I remember taking demos to Numos and, you know, whatever else. And uh, now I'm playing on top of Numos. That's right. Um, but yeah, I, it's, Seattle holds a very special place in my heart. You were living in New Orleans for a while. Are you back in L.A. now? Mm -hmm. I absolutely love the album. It's so beautiful, and it is so big and so lush. To hear you play these songs like this today is just amazing. It's so intimate. Is this how the songs got started? Because they are so big on the album with the live band. You've got yeah. all the different elements. Did you just sort of sketch them out with a guitar? Yeah. That's, um, yeah, I mean, basically how I'm playing them now is how they, they all have to kind of pass that test. Um, with the odd, you know, like true affection, or obviously I didn't, wasn't sitting at home, candlelit room with a <laughs> drum machine or anything, but <laughs> though that does sound awesome. <laughs> Honey, what are you doing in here? <laughs> Why are you naked with a guitar on? <laughs> Again. Uh, but they all, yeah, they, they, all, they all start that way. And I mean, I, you know, it's one thing to, to write sentiments kind of that vulnerable and personal, which hasn't really been my wheelhouse up to now. And to just, you know, have them just kind of a thing that exists at home between Emma and I. And then once I got into the studio and was playing them around my adult male friends, I started to feel very self-conscious. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I, some of that is why the tunes are so big, you know, is because I was kind of trying to make this bargain with myself, this Freudian exchange, you know, that was like, well, I will let you talk about your soiled bed sheets for the whole world to hear if you let me cover all this up with, you know, Disney schmaltz. Um, but that did end up getting, you know, curbed back a little bit, but there was definitely a, a version of the album that was more or less unlistenable at, at one point. <laughs> yeah. Was it challenging to represent what you heard in your head to get it down on, on tape or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, my, my first, you know, we, we went on this trip out, out to the desert and, um, I was, uh, this was like year, like three or four years ago or something at this point, but, um, and uh, on that trip I wrote Honey Bear, and I know that like all my stories start this way, but we were like hallucinating and um, <laughs> I was just hearing all these strings, you know, like, it, and that really was the sound, that really was like the guiding principle through, through the whole thing was this, this sound that's like very, you know, very difficult to, to kind of articulate, but I think that the album is, you know, for the most part, like a successful representation of, of that, um, of that uh, hallucination. But um, <laughs> You're a very talented musician, obviously, you've been doing it for a long time, but there's a lot of variety on this record in its bigness. You, you know, you have electronic and R&B and strings and the mariachi. Mm -hmm. did, did you need other people to help you figure some of that out, even though you, you know quite a bit and you've been doing this for a long time? Yeah, I mean, the story with the mariachi horns is like, you know, when I first brought that demo into, uh, or I first played it for Jonathan, he was like, we should put some mariachi horns on this. And I was like, there is no way I'm putting mariachi horns on my album. And then we proceeded to track the song like four different, you know, it's called Chateau Lobby Number no. Four because it's like the fourth iteration of the song. You know, I mean, I tried it. We did this like narcoleptic country version of it. We did this like horrible Spectre version of it. Um, and there was like a there was like a ripoff version of that Beatles song. They're like, dun, 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 dun. I don't remember the name of the song. Fuck the Beatles. Um, <laughs> But um, but then it you know but then it came you know it, it came back around at the end I was so beat down and so discouraged I was like let's just put the mariachi horns on it now 
I give up. And then it was, you know, like pure magic. So I take no credit for that. Um, that was purely Jonathan's um, insight. But it ended up being, you know, something that I didn't see about why it was so great is because it really is like, the tune is this very romantic sentiment about us meeting in Los Angeles and cruising around and getting into God knows what. And um, that's, you know, really the sound of that. Um, you know, it's like a sentimental tune, you know. I I'm love just rambling now. I do love that story. I also loved the image of you coming up with the idea and saying to Jonathan Wilson, all right, right here, I wanted to go. Right. Well, the corn, that's yeah, what the he horn, did to the you horn probably. Part, yeah, the horn part <laughs> is a vocal melody that I had on the demo, you know, that just happened to um, transfer really well to horn. It, it totally was like a mariachi, like, yeah, no, 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 no. It was actually like 200 bucks extra to have them come into the studio in <laughs> costume. Yeah, pretty amazing. I'm, sh I'm sure Thanks, that made the pop. song better. <laughs> uh, but you were saying, yeah, so it was like a very, you know, in, in some respect, in, you know, it is like a highly stylized album, which is not something I'm sure I, I totally want to do again. But for me, you know, some of the sentiments, I'm just like a lyricist, you know, and um, very um, unambitious musically. So um, if there's like a lyric that like, well, this is a soul tune, you know, then I just went with that. So it is, it is the only guiding principle, I think, in my albums is my voice as a, as a lyricist and my literal voice, you know, but outside of that, I don't think you can really pinpoint like a, I wouldn't, I don't think I have like a sound or something, you know. You mentioned that these are love songs for your wife, Emma. Did you create them and then present a finished product to her, or was she giving input along Darling, the way? Darling, come into the studio. <laughs> I present. That's exactly uh, what I'm yeah. picturing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bring my guitar. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it. You know, it. I, I was, you know, I mean, whether I'm writing something, you know, I mean, she really is kind of my um, collaborator in that, you know, in that respect. And a muse in a very, in a, you know, in the, there are some very, in a very direct sense in some of these songs, but then also in a very indirect sense in that there's just a certain, like, standard for not bullshitting around our house. So... That is very inspiring in and of itself, and knowing that I can, that really the only thing that's going to like, you know, be presentable is, is something that um, is uh, truthful, you know, in a, in a, you know, we were just talking upstairs about like the nature of truth because that's the kind of stuff that just goes down in green rooms. It's not, <laughs> it's not cocaine, sorry. Um, and saying that, you know, I mean, it, uh, it's, it is something that lies at the cross section of like a violent contradiction. And that, that's, I think, what's at the core of the album. Please let me know if this is horrible um, drinking uh, entertainment. But um, this album is like very contradictory in a lot, of, you know, it's so full, um, it's so full of, you know, angst and uncertainty and fear. Um, and that's just kind of, it, it's a very premature evaluation of love and intimacy and just kind of the fear and trembling and the anxiety that can go into unmasking for someone else for the first time, you know? So I think that I'm gonna write, I will continue to write about love and mystery and all of that, but it'll, it'll hopefully look a lot different than you know, the, the, me spazzing out in the way that I am on this album. Well, with all this emotion and honest, honest and emotional candor, there's really no going back, so the sky's yeah. the limit. This is like the worst stand-up ever. Like, I'm kind <laughs> of like, like walking, <laughs> walking around. Well, okay. on that note, does yeah. anybody want to ask Josh a question? Come on over here. We want to get you on the microphone so everybody can hear the question. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thanks. What's your favorite Jonathan Wilson song? Uh, Lately. I think Desert Raven's probably my favorite JW tune. Great choice. <laughs> I was going to ask you, Josh, are you, uh, is Jonathan going to produce the next album? Wow, good lord. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, uh, I, I don't know yet. I, I mean, I, you know, we're, we're, we're talking that stuff through. But I'm, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not really at liberty to, to talk much about it for Sure, thank you for being here, reasons. by the way. Yeah, I'm <laughs> planning on plagiarizing a lot of other people's music on the next one, so for legal reasons, I can't discuss it. Hi, Josh. I'm Hi. Jody, and sorry, my question is long and complicated. Um, I know you are a person who has gone through some significant transitions in your life, and currently I'm going through an important transition, and let's just say I have experienced my own crying at the drum kit moment. Um, what do you think are the most important next steps in personal transformation? Oh, wow. <laughs> um, this is a tough one to answer, like, on your feet. Um, <laughs> Sorry. But no, 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 I, I, I appreciate the question. Yeah. Um, no, I wouldn't. I, wouldn't uh, um, I mean, I think it sounds like you... Uh, like you have um, like a lot of the clarity required, you know, obviously you have the courage to get into this like spotlight on the side of the room here and <laughs> ask that question into a microphone in front of a room full of people. And I think that kind of clarity and courageousness is, will take you, is already like a step in the right direction in terms of like, you know, transformation and change. Thank you. So. But I'll think about it and then just post it on Twitter or something. Yeah. Be a lot less useful than that answer. I'm gonna have a heart attack. Oh God, you make me so nervous. <sighs> okay, wait, let me take a breath. Let me take a sip. Yep, do a shot. It's right near, okay. As a young woman who was a like hopeless romantic, your music has like it's touched my heart in a way. You know, I can tell you're a sentimental, feely kind of guy. <laughs> and I love that. Oh, God, my heart hurts. Okay, hold on. I feel like a fangirl. <laughs> it's not funny. Okay. Do you have any advice for a hopeless young romantic woman? Like, in the world, mm. like, just go out there, girl. Like. Um, don't be such a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. I'll try. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. That's all. That's all. Um. <laughs> oh God. No, no. I, I, I mean, I'm. Uh, Blush. I only said that because I'm terrified of, you know, exposing myself. Um, uh, yeah. No. I, actually, you know what? I take it back. That's a great answer. <laughs> Thank You'll you, always right? have that. Just don't let it like run wild with your life. Okay. You know, like. That's not the only, you know, I mean, I don't know what I'm saying. This is like, I'm only good at talking about myself. I'm sorry. Do it. No, go. Go. Do yeah. it. Do it. Thanks for talking to me. Josh, you put a lot out there in your live shows, and you're quite the showman. But especially lately when there's been so much honesty in your music, how often are you really able in a live show to just let loose and put it all out there yourself mm. and be fully yourself? I'd say it's like a grotesque kind of cabaret imitation of myself, like 35% of the time. Um, but even in that, there's something, you know, it's still possible to give people something with that, um, believe it or not. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've just had to turn, you know, I wasn't sure how I was going to be able to do these tunes live. I mean, the last time. The whole um, thing was very predicated on this like antagonism of myself and of the audience, and um, that was funny and strange, and but had kind of run its course. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess I thought initially like, well, I'm going to have to, you know, every night I guess I'm going to be singing these tunes like to Emma, you know, like every night, 
or you know to myself or or whatever. And um, I very quickly realized that was not the way to go, because we both neither of us want to live in that in that time you know in that time period. And we're both like trying to move forward. So I really just turned have turned the live show into a um, somewhat disturbing psychodrama between me and the first few rows of people in the audience. And that seems to work. Um, I can't quite say why, but, and it sounds like pedantic or something to say that, I'm, that I just sing the tunes to the audience, but um, that's just how it is, yeah. I can't think of anything better. Yeah. We thank you for singing for us today. I absolutely loved Fear Fun, and I thought I wanted another album exactly like that. And then you really surprised us with I Love You, Honey Bear. And I'm tempted to say I want another record like that, but really, I'm just really excited to see what you're going to come up with next. So Thanks so much. Thank you for coming today. And yeah. if you could entertain yeah. us some more with that beautiful voice, we'd be. Are there any requests? I would play Never Been a Woman, but I, there are like 13 verses to that. Writing a novel? Okay. <laughs> Who said no? <laughs> Oh, okay, oh, okay. I ran down the road, pants down to my knees, screaming, please come help me. That Canadian shaman gave a little too much to me, and I'm writing a novel. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why? Because it's never been done before. First house that I saw, I wrote house up on the door. Told the people who lived there they had to get out, cause my reality is realer than yours. There's no time in the present. There's a black dog on the bed So I went to the backyard Naturally to burn my only clothes Oh, and the dog ran out and said You can't turn nothing into nothingness with me no more Well, I'm no doctor That my monkey might be right Walking in my whole life Road to Malibu On a dune buggy with Neil he Said you're gonna have to drown me down On the beach if you ever wanna write the real I said I'd love to What's your name again? Now everywhere I go in West Hollywood is filled with people pretending they don't see the actress and the actress wishing that they could. We can do ayahuasca. Oh, baby, if I wasn't holding on. was the mayor I don't need any new friends but I could really use something to do also to get up for some time I swear you wouldn't have to be my muse oh. i
drinking poppy tea. I could have sworn last night I passed out my van, and now these guys are pouring one for me. I never leave a canyon. Cause I'm surrounded on all sides. Yeah, my people riding. How many people rise and say My brain's so awfully glad to be here For yet another mindless day Now I've got all morning to obsessively cruise Objects they've gotta represent me too. By this afternoon, I live in debt. By tomorrow, be replaced by children. Bodies still here. Our arrangement hasn't changed. Now I've got a lifetime to consider all the ways I grow more disappointing to you as my beauty warps and fades. I suspect you feel the same When I was young I dreamt of a passionate obligation to a roommate Is this the part where I get all I ever wanted Who said that? Just a little boat in the USA Oh, just a little boat in the USA Save me white Jesus Boat in the USA Oh Get off 
But I can kind of deal Oh, with being bored in the USA Oh, just a little bored in the USA Save me, President Jesus, I'm bored in the USA Wait, how did it happen? Born in the USA Oh We met in a parking lot Just buying coffee and cigarettes Firewood and bad wine long since gone But I'm still drunk and hot wide awake And breathing hard Now in just one year's time I've become jealous, real thin Prone to paranoia when I'm stoned This isn't true love Someone ought to put me in a home Say, do you want to get married and put an end to our endless progressive tendency to scorn provincial concepts like your dowry and your daddy's farm for love to find us of all people I never thought it'd be so simple Let's buy a plantation house and let the yard grow wild till we don't need the signs that say keep out I've got some money left and it's cheaper in the south I need someone I can trust to protect me from our seven daughters when my body says enough. Don't let me die in a hospital. I'll save the big one for the last time we make love. Insert here. Sentiment re our golden years All cause I went to the store
I've seen you around. What's your name? Father John Misty, so amazing. We wanna thank Josh so much for his generosity and all of you, thank you so much for coming out to this special event in support of KEXP's new home. We couldn't do it without you and we can't wait to invite you to so many more of these. Thank you so much for coming out. Let's hear it one more time for Father John Misty. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.